So this was a very, very big week for the markets, but I gotta say, it kind of just lagged. We weren't really getting much movement at all up until Friday, and even then, we really didn't get much move to even begin with, even though it was PCE. We can see right here, guys, when it comes to this, on the five day, well, this um gained half a percent. That really is it. So this is, I don't necessarily know, right? I just don't necessarily know. Kind of lackluster for PCE falling right after the Fed dropping interest rates by 0.5%. Which, to be fair, this doesn't really affect this PCE. It'll affect the other ones coming down the line. Maybe even the next year ones. But it really is interesting to see that with this, the market really didn't go up too much to begin with. And speaking of PCE, we can see here that it actually came in a whole lot lower than what we were expecting. We can see that the previous one was 2.5% and they were expecting 2.3 year over year. It came in guys at 2.2. So the Fed's most wanted inflation metric, PCE, is essentially a 2%, right? It's essentially a 2% and I maybe this is a reason as to why they decided to cut interest rates by 50 basis points because they get this data. I mean, we already know, guys, they get this data way, way in advance. And we're essentially at 2.2, right? We're essentially at 2.2. If we take a look at this graph throughout the years or throughout the months, sorry, not throughout the years, but throughout the months, we can see that we're essentially, yeah, we're essentially there. Going from a peak of 6.8 in July 29th of 2022 to now of 2.2 in August of 2024. So it took two years, guys, two years for inflation to fall down, PCE inflation to fall down, but it did it. And well, the Fed specifically said that they're now going to switch over, have a balanced approach to inflation as well as uh, job numbers. So that's essentially what we're seeing right there. And it makes you wonder as to why they're doing that because if the job market were to be this wonderful thing, well, they wouldn't be switching to begin with, right? They would just ease off but not focus on the job market. Now, wouldn't they? But as you guys can see that they are focusing on the job markets, which makes you wonder as to why they are to begin with. Now, let's take a look at upcoming earnings. On Monday, you guys can't see it because I'm covering it, but it is Carnival Corporation. And that's it. Now, Tuesday is going to be a really interesting one because of the company Nike. Nike, guys, I believe that they got just a brand new CEO. And who we can see this, guys, by this article from September 19th. Nike faces challenges even as the new CEO brightens the spirit of investors. Nike turned some heads on Thursday by announcing that CEO John... That's the name. Don't know how will step down to be replaced by Elliot Hill. Hill spent his career at Nike in various senior leadership positions across Europe and North America and then retired following his role as president of Consumer and Marketplace in 2020. Looking ahead, Hill said he looks forward to reconnecting with the employees and partners he worked with over the years to build a new relationship in delivering innovative products that set Nike apart from the marketplace. Morgan Stanley's read the management move was that it was unsurprising in light of recent profit volatility, guidance shortcomings, and lack of strategic long-term clarity. The firm now thinks a full-year guidance this cut is likely when Nike reports first first quarter Q1 earnings in October 1st, which is actually coming up. Analyst Alex Stratton said it's unclear if Nike will still hold its Investors Day event on November 19th, with Hill not taking over the CEO position until October 13th. So you guys can see that Nike guys is still a really, really interesting company to say the least. We could guys, I mean, look, right, Nike right now is not near all-time lows, but it is very, very much close to that, right? We're essentially leaning towards almost the middle of that, right? Almost the middle of this. On the one year, Nike is up 0.02%. And if we take a look at this in the even longer scale, guys, we're at the point here that we were, oh my goodness, look at this. We're at the point here at nearly the downturn, like the, the beginning of the downturn of COVID, right? So this does present itself as a very, very good buying opportunity if you believe that Nike will, will stay here for a long time, which me personally, I think that they will. So obviously not financial advice, but I personally think that they will. And well, tell me what you guys think. Are you planning to buy this company at this price? I, I really am curious to know if you guys are diving in head first because they do have a Pretty good dividend, as you guys can see here, 1.65%, not a high yield, but the five-year CAGR is massive, almost 11%, and the payout ratio does seem to be pretty good at 36.62%. So that is one of the companies that has earnings on Tuesday this week. We also got Paychex and McCormick. On Wednesday, we got Levi's, RPM, and 
Conagra. Okay. On Thursday, we got Constellation Brands and Angio Dynamics. And on Friday, we got, uh, oh my goodness, Apogee, Apogee Enterprises. So again, earnings season, guys, essentially over. I'll probably just cover Nike uh, this week if I am able to. But aside from that, I'm just going to keep taking your guys' recommendations. So hopefully, I will be able to get your guys' recommendations this week. I'll be able to do a lot more videos for you guys this week as well. All right, guys. So now let's head over into now the heat map. And well, we can see that um, this is kind of it's kind of 50 50 obviously leaning slightly more to the upside mainly brought up by of course the tech sector because it's usually where it is but let's take a look at this in the tech sector we got the worst performer being the company gpn global payments losing 8.74 percent and the best performer it is the company micron gaining 18.26 percent after a massive jump after their earnings so that does it for the technology sector. Looking now into the communication sector, all of these gained, all except for one, and that was Charter Communications, losing 1.26. And the best performer, it is none other than the company Fox Corporation, gaining 5.12%. Looking now into the consumer cyclicals, a lot of green here as well. Actually, maybe it wasn't brought up by the tech sector. Maybe it was brought up by the consumer cyclicals. We got here, guys, a lot of green. Overall, though, the worst performer is the company General Motors, losing 4.91%. And the best performer seems to be none other than the company. I think I just found it. Wow. Wow, that one's crazy. That one's just absolutely insane, guys. Yeah, it's definitely that one. It is the company Las Vegas Sands gaining 21.77%. Absolutely massive. I mean, Tesla also gained 9.32. You got Yum over here. Yum Brands, 7.87. This is just, most of these are green, right? Most of these are absolutely green. Looking at the consumer defensives, 50-50 on this one. A lot of green, but also a lot of just not red, but not deep green as well. The worst performer, it is none other than the company Campbell's Soup. Losing 3.61%. Also, guys, Costco lost as well after their earnings, which was fairly surprising. Wasn't expecting that one. Losing 2.35%. But overall, though, that was the worst performer, Campbell Soup. And the best performer, Esther Lauder, gaining 17.48%. Looking into now the financials, we got the worst performer being the company Moody's Corp, losing 4.28%. And the best performer, it is the company msci gaining 4.49 percent in the healthcare sector there's a lot of deep red but also a lot of deep green as well the worst performer it is the company regeneron losing 8.94 percent and the best performer seems to be none other than cvs gaining 6.73 percent i love how cvs and uh walgreens are just complete bipolar opposites right here even though they're actually not in the same industry which i kind of thought they were but all right that's really interesting to say the least again that was the best performer cvs health corporation into the industrials we got a lot of wow there's actually a lot of deep green here there's barely any deep red actually there isn't any deep red at all we got the worst performer being the company equifax losing 2.91 percent and the best performer seems to be the company united airlines gaining 11.16 percent but you guys have a bunch of companies here like for example aos gaining 9.29 Caterpillar gaining 6.04, Otis gaining 9.33. This is a lot of good, good moving companies here, as y'all can see. Into now the real estate sector. A lot of red here, a lot of red here, which I do like to see. Of course, I got to mention that Realty Income, guys, $62.73. Remember when this company was sub $50 for about nine months there? A lot of people were saying that this company was about to crash and burn. It is now $62.73, so hopefully y'all bought when this was uh, sub-60 and even sub-50 at one point. Worst performer here, it is none other than ESS losing 3.79%, and the best performer seems to be the company Health Peak Properties gaining 2.68%. The utility sector, it is massively in the green, not a lot of deep green, but it is still very Pretty decently in the green overall. Worst performer, it is the company PNW. I know you guys can't see that, but it lost 2.23%. And best performer, it is none other than Vistra gaining 9.12%. And in complete contrast, we got the energy sector. A lot of red here. The worst performer being the company Fang, Diamondback Energy, 
losing 5.73%. And the best performer, it is EQT, gaining 4.88%. CVX lost 0.13 and Exxon gained half of a percent. And lastly, the basic materials. Wow, this is the greenest I've ever seen this sector. There's only three companies here that lost, and those were Vulcan Materials losing 0.72. Newmont losing 1.05 and the worst performer Martin Marietta Materials MLM losing 1.31%. Overall though the best performer it is none other than the company Freeport McMoran gaining 15.29% but you guys have companies for example Albemarle also gaining 11.65%. So all in all when it comes to the S&P 500 and just the markets in general this week I gotta say I was expecting a whole lot more didn't really see it, right? Didn't really see it. Yes, you saw pockets of it, but you really didn't see, eh, I don't know. I, I was expecting a whole lot more, especially after PCE falling that much and, you know, and the Fed also cutting rates the last week or two weeks ago by 50, right? So I was expecting a whole lot more. Not really that exciting. We shall see the end of the quarter. It is upon us and uh, we are going into now Q, well, we're going to get Q3 numbers, but we're heading into Q4. And we're possibly heading to the biggest volatile day of the year, even more than that of FOMC, CPI, and anything else. And that is the presidential election in about, what, five weeks? Four and a half weeks? So it's going to be really interesting. Guys, so terribly sorry that, you know, we really didn't get to do much this week when it came to live streaming and videos. And, well, this is going to be the video for today. Mike, unfortunately, is going through the hurricane and uh prayers for him right prayers for him but we will get back to hopefully our normal video and streaming schedule this upcoming week thank you guys so much for watching make sure to subscribe comment really does help with the algorithm on youtube as well so make sure to follow us on xfl investing if you like to us on the discord link is in the description below so with that said peace out and we'll see you all next time